Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. This isn't going to be a fixing or a refurbishing video. We're going to be comparing three different options of Game Boy Shell. We're going to be looking at repainting a Game Boy Shell, replacing a Game Boy Shell, or retro brighting a Game Boy Shell. Three R's, very interesting. I've got two incredibly yellowed up Game Boy Shells here. Um, they're pretty much beat up as hell. And then I've also got a brand new um, replacement one. Let's get into the video. So the first one we're going to be doing is spray painting the Game Boy shell. So in order to do this, you're going to need to remove the uh, battery terminals from the inside. You're also going to need to take off any stickers that you have uh, left on the Game Boy. Um, and we're going to need to remove the screen lens as well. We won't need to be doing any sanding to this because it already has like a kind of nice matte um, rough finish. So uh, we should be absolutely fine with that. Although what I'm going to do is just pop it in the sink first, take a toothbrush and clean everything up just to make sure that there's going to be no dirt underneath the paint. I just use a, an old toothbrush um, and then just give everything a little bit of a clean. It doesn't really matter too much about the inside, it's more so just to make sure that there's no dirt on the outside. It doesn't really need to be absolutely perfect, um, but just enough to make sure that there's no dirt in the crevices. Okay, so let's go ahead and paint it then. I've just put some cardboard down. I'm not an expert spray painter, um, so this may not come out fantastic. I've removed the uh, little metal shield that was here as well and taken all the stickers off and everything, and it's all ready for a coat of, coat of spray paint. Um, this spray paint does not say that it's usable on plastic. The benefit of using spray paint is that you can get some custom colors, you know. Um, obviously, I'm just using a kind of a similar one to the Game Boy, just for the uh, video purpose and the fact that I already had this. But you can use colors like, I don't know, purple or whatever you want. So in terms of spray painting, I just kind of do it a thin coat from as far away as possible without you know, making it too blotchy. So for the next Game Boy shell, we're going to be trying to retro bright it. Now I have done quite a lot of retro brighting on the channel. I've just done a retro brighting video on a Game Boy cartridge to see if that is a viable solution of refurbishing your Game Boy cartridges. And next up, we're going to be doing it to um, a nice big DMG shell. I've done a lot of Game Boy Pocket um, shells in the past, but not a lot of DMG ones. So I've just sprayed it with a little bit of um, Mr. Sheen, which is just a multi-surface polish, and it just picks up all the uh, the lint and the dirt. As always with retro brighting, you want to make sure that the surface that you're um, that you're cleaning is thoroughly clean, because um, otherwise the light won't be able to get onto it. So that will include having little specks of uh, dust and dirt. So just make sure you take it all off. Okay, and then we're just going to set the uh, DMG shell on there like so and you take your little pot of um, hair bleach salon cream volume 40 and just pop it all over the shell comme ça you want as much as it on there as possible you don't want to overdo it but you definitely want um, enough on there that you're going to be able to um, cover it all up afterwards in fact I probably need a little bit more and I've just got it on my hands okay I think that's pretty good right there so we'll wrap that up. Okay, and then you want to just kind of um, massage the uh, retro brighting cream around the shell, just to kind of cover all of the, uh, the areas that you want, or pretty much all of it. And the bottom. And there we go. We now have ourselves a little DMG wrapped up, ready to go into the um, furnace, which is actually just the nail hardener stuff. You can only do uh, one shell at a time on uh, this one that I have, but you might find a bigger one. 
And then you just get your aluminium tape or aluminum for those of you who are American. I always get slated for my pronunciation. And then you go ahead and turn it on. And then this one's gonna need probably about two to three hours. Um, you need to ch check it every now and again, make sure um, that the salon cream hasn't dried up, otherwise you'll get loads of streaks across it, which we might get anyway, it's really hard not to get those. It's been quite a few hours now since I set this up uh, to begin with, and uh, I'm thinking it's probably about done now. I have actually replaced the uh, solution on this once. I've decided I'm only gonna do the front just because it's gonna take too long to do the back. The next thing we need to do is now take it out of the, uh, the cling film pop it into the sink and give it a nice wash. Okay, and so here we are. This is it then, the finale of the video. I'm really, really happy, to be honest with you, uh, with how this Retro Bright has turned out. Um, there's a little, there's no streaking on it, which is um, good. It has actually, um, you know, come out looking really, really good. You can still see on the top, there's a little bit of discoloration and on the bottom. Now, the reason why that is was as it went in to the, um, the, the nail hardener, it hasn't actually been able to get light on the top and on the bottom, which is a big shame, but you can see it's really worked on the sides and on the front, which looks great. Here's the uh, screen lens that it came with. You can imagine, you know, putting a nice new screen lens on that. In fact, I can even demonstrate that for you now. That won't actually look too bad for a DMG right there. And um, technically speaking, this is the most uh, cost efficient one. Um, so let's just quickly um, go on to the spray paint one and then we'll talk about um, all of the pricing and stuff like that. So here's the spray painted one here. Now, as you can see, it didn't turn out too bad. From a distance, it looks like it's turned out pretty well. Um, unfortunately, it's gonna be very difficult to get that color match right. You can see there that it's really, really not quite right. Now, I'm no spray painting expert, but I do think that I can spray paint quite well is covered. That is not ideal. <laughs> what has just happened there? <laughs> Definitely used the wrong paint on this. You can see um, on the sides of this, there is some real um, issues. This is less than ideal. This is not the right paint for it. This might not work. I think what happened was using uh, the wood paint is just something that's definitely not gonna work. So what I did is I went out and bought some proper plastic paint. Now here you go, look at this, way more like it. This is a um, another DMG shell that I had that was uh, quite beat up. Someone's actually um, like engraved their initials into the back of it. Now I painted this, um, I did a few coats of it. Um, I recorded a little bit of footage on my phone so it's not gonna look too great. I gave it a nice little clean up beforehand and then I uh, took it downstairs, put it on some cardboard and painted it. I tried to get you know some even coats um, on it and uh, it's come out looking absolutely blooming excellent. I even um, rummaged around and found a little um, DMG uh, lens. This is a Play It Loud one and I took some of the um, of the sticky stuff that comes on the inside of replacement lenses. I had loads of those. So I only spent seven pounds on the, uh, the spray paint. And as I said, I'm no spray painting expert. You just have to, um, you know, just do it really carefully. Do it in thin coats from a distance as opposed to uh, thick coats close up. Look at that, that looks absolutely blooming excellent. Obviously you're now missing the writing, so that is a downside. So let's talk about price really quickly and then we're gonna have a look at the quality of this shell. So. Let's ignore um, this one because this really, really didn't turn out very well at all. But thank you very much to Alex for helping me film uh, that segment of the video. So here is the, um, the first one that we, that we looked at. This one was super, super yellow. Um, and yeah, it obviously looks a lot better, but you do have the issue with um, the fact that the bottom hasn't really worked very well. Also, from a time perspective, this one, caught, this one took about two, two and a half, three hours to do, and that's only the front and it's still not even finished. This one in the middle, this one probably took about the same time to, uh, to do, except you now have a really, really nice um, coat of paint all over it, and I did it in a nice gold color. I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out. Um, I managed to get the battery cover looking good. I think once you started putting you know, a sticker on here and a replacement one up here, you wouldn't even be able to tell that this was um, hand done, so super happy with this one. So talking of cost, the replacement shell cost 10 pounds, the spray painted one costs seven pounds and 24 pence and I have you know three quarters of a can left. And the um, retro bright one, the nail hardener could potentially be free if you already own one. Um, although I think replacement ones on eBay is about 10, 15 pounds. I'll leave a link to one in the description below. And the, uh, the little solution costs about let's say two pounds. So this one's almost double the cost of this one. And yeah, 
you can be the judge of which one you think looks better. I'm definitely going to go for this one. And last but not least, let's talk about why I never order replacement um, Game Boy shells. So the biggest problem with it is it's kind of like translucent. It's going to be really, really hard to, uh, to see that on this video, but it just goes to show that the quality of these things, you can kind of see the light peeking through there. The quality of this plastic is not great. This definitely works as a, you know, a, a cheap um, kind of quick replacement, um, but you can immediately feel when holding this that the, uh, the quality is not great. Um, this, the start and select text is always off. Um, and if you've had a look at some of the other videos that I've done, um, the Nintendo sometimes even really off as well. The, the replacement is like a slightly more, uh, I don't know, beige kind of color. It's like a more yellowed than uh, the gray. I don't really know how to describe that. It looks pretty close when you get it like this, but you can definitely see this one's like darker. And for 10 pounds, you do get a replacement set of screws and buttons, which I guess is quite cool, and replacement membranes. But 10 pounds, you've only got one. Um, at least with this one, you've got another can of spray paint, and this one, you've got the apparatus to do uh, another one again. So it's a quick replacement. It's definitely not the worst, um, but it's definitely not the best. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I'm definitely gonna say that the spray painting method was my favorite. There is always the slight concern that when you start putting Game Boy cartridges in and out, they're gonna start um, scratching that, but that's something that you might just have to kind of live with with this. If it's a display piece that you're not gonna use a lot, then it's fine, or if you've got an EverDrive cart, um, then it's gonna be fine as well. Um, yeah, okay. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.